Hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're gonna show you a creative solution that Brian came up with in order to slice his spacers for his logs. So previously, um, in the discussion of the stairwell design, Brian was going to be using some logs from the woods that he sort of cut down, but he wasn't excited about how the logs had so many check marks. Um, and he thought that the log that he picked to mill at the lumber yard just was a bad log. So he actually went out and got a fresh log and decided to do the milling himself. Now we don't have a, we don't have any kind of wood miller. We don't have a bandsaw. We don't have a portable saw mill. So in this video, you're going to see how Brian designed a little jig for himself to be able to get log slices and how he was able to make them, um, level enough so that he could use, utilize them for spacers. So you can see here how he took the bark off. Uh, it's all smooth and um, on both sides, but we'll tell you more about that in the video. As you can see behind me, we've got a stack of stair treads. So I'm also gonna show you the finishing of the stair treads in this video. Uh, you know, sustaining polyurethane. I had one tilted up. You can see where this one's got a few more cracks, so we're gonna do something different with that with two of the steps because they're a little bit more severely cracked than we would like. And we like to preserve them from cracking additionally. So anyway, uh, I've got my little handkerchief on because went to town today and uh, got some groceries. And well, turned out I couldn't go into the store with Brian because they're only letting one person per household in. But it was fun to get out of the property, go for a ride in the car, because I have been on the property for three weeks now without leaving. So been social distancing and today I got to go to town and wear a handkerchief uh, got to stand outside the car for five minutes so <laughs> that was my getting out today but anyways guys let me get you to the video and show you how Brian designed his log cutting jig taking one final look at the stair treads before they are finished. Uh, you can see the bow ties in there covering the cracks and some of the bigger cracks we're going to have to do some extra work on because we're not going to leave them like that. But uh, yeah, all the bow ties are in place. Everything's sanded. Brian is using some lacquer thinner now to kind of get little goo spots of all of the pine sap that are still on a few of the stair treads. That was kind of a uh, one of the problems that is still going on is gooing, gooing of the uh, pine pitch and the, the sap continues to leak out of some of these treads, but hopefully it'll get sealed in once we urethane them. But what a difference with the stain, check it out. So really darkening up the treads, really bringing out that wood grain. And even with the bow ties looks kind of cute because it's a little bit of contrast there. So you can still see the bow ties in the wood, but having a really nice look, it's going to match with the trim. It's kind of, it's the same cherry color of the wood trim upstairs around the doors and the baseboards. So that'll tie together nicely, but yeah, definitely a lot of work there getting that done. Mm -hmm. The very finishing of the stair treads for level one. Brian's finishing up the last couple of stair treads, uh, second coat with the go. polyurethane there. Uh, earlier in the week, I had done all of the base coat polyurethane for all the stair treads and both sides because, you know, you're going to be seeing the stair treads from above and below. So on all sides, they are um, fully coated. And, um, you know, Brian just went through today with the light this weekend with a light sanding and then a second coat of the polyurethane. So uh, luckily, it was a nice mild weekend and we were able to keep the doors open afterwards and let everything air out. Um, definitely can smell up the house if you're doing that stuff inside, but what a nice look. Definitely pleased with the final look of the treads. But over here, you can see our stack of finished steps, all glazed up <laughs> with polyurethane. Now, Brian did save a couple. There's two steps that are more cracked than others, and he's going to fill these cracks with epoxy. So this step and then the one below it. They have a little bit more severe cracking. So that's the final step he wants to do for these before he um, starts the assembly. Of course, we gotta do the, the drill out. So we're gonna be borrowing a drill press to, to do the cutout here. And then um, you saw earlier, we're actually um, gonna show you Brian's chainsaw jig that he made to slice up his rounds here and uh, 
um, how he's going to assemble the spacers in between the steps. Cutting a jig. Making a log cutting jig with two by fours. And then the log will go here. And then this is 90 degrees to here. Mm -hmm. So I can use a chainsaw, and this will be my guide, to cut right down, make a nice square cut. Mm. And I just slide the log forward. Uh-huh. So. Okay. That's my plan. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. See how it works. See how it works. Where does the log go? Right there. Ah. Uh, and then how does the chainsaw go? Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see it. Let's see it. clarify some things going on here um, you can see that the log is strapped into place sort of that's securing it and you know he's got a ratchet strap there just to hold that log while he's going through it and then underneath the log yeah there's a support board and that's another thing that's keeping the log elevated not so close to the ground giving you a little bit of extra clearance there um, and then he's keeping the you know the chainsaw blade as parallel as possible against the frame that he's built there. Um, he does suggest that maybe there are some room for improvements as far as maybe mounting something to the chainsaw blade itself as sort of like a little bit of a buffer, um, a, a, a glide, so the chainsaw blade doesn't get stuck there. Uh, let me show you what I got for my jig here. Uh, I had to do a few different uh, alignment guides to keep everything as uh, square as I could get it. So let me show you. So first of all, I've got a, a line here on the board that goes the full length. And then I snap the chalk line on the top of the log. In addition, I planed off the log so I'd have a flat spot. So there's the, the plane mark there. Because I needed something flat to keep it uniform as I slid the log forward. And then on the back side, there's that line here. And then I've got a line scribed from the chalk line down and so that keeps, keeps my back straight so I keep that lined up there and I just slide it forward 
keep everything lined up and then I throw the strap on it and that's working pretty good it's just, the saw is not chewing up the 2x4 too bad um, what I probably need are some little plastic eighth inch edges on the saw itself maybe glued on there and then it would just run down there but I put my marks here that's five inches and that's uh, five and three eighths it's so I, I'm trying to go right around the eighth inch mark there because I, I have to do some sanding on it as well so but uh, seems to be working out pretty good As soon as I said that, I dug right into my damn thing. <laughs> I've already made 10 and I have to replace it. Turn it around. Sending down your spacers. Yep. I had to run to town today to get sandpaper. It needs the 40 grit. Yeah, you really need that to get the end grain. Mm-hmm. That's a good job. Mm-hmm. Is that much in the bag already? Well. Got a hole in my bag so it can squirt out. Alright, it's almost done. It's good to go. You can see the light ones are the ones that have been sanded. The yellowy ones are remain to be worked. Oh, I see. What it needs is a couple little pieces of like eighth inch shims glued on here. And then you could just ride down the Without oh. the chain chewing up the side. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I was halfway done by the time I thought of that. You didn't even cut through your board all the way down there. I know. <laughs> you were so I'm close. getting there. <laughs> you were so close. Getting close. So that was just, you had to prop up your log? Yeah, and I had to uh, plane it. Oh. So because it was... the irregularities, as, as I was moving the log forward, it would change position. Oh. So if I didn't, I had this, so that makes it square mm -hmm. this way. Right. And then I drew this line oh. down the middle. Yeah. And I had a, I would keep a line on the front of the log and the back, see? So, and that would keep it square in the other direction. Okay. So it's square in two planes. Okay. So I kept that there and I would, I had an L bracket on here that I would screw into here to hold it. Uh-huh. And then the strap. Uh -huh. Hold the front. Worked out for you. Yeah, let me see. Pretty good. So. You gotta make it work. <laughs> you gotta make it work. Without spending three, five hundred bucks on a bandsaw. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna make it work? Hey, for peeing on. Mm-hmm. What do you think about all that wood? Trying to remember which order no, they did. They're in order. They just whether they're flipped upside over or not. Oh. Is another thing. Looks like I've got three. 
So you happy with how your logs came out? Uh, yeah, I think so. They're, uh, I think they're nice and square. I mean, they're all stacked up, and they look pretty, pretty square to me. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, I might want to fill the cracks with some epoxy. Okay. But because once I drill a hole in there, mm -hmm. it might loosen them up. I know we're going to put a band around them. You're going to band them with like a metal... Uh, like shipping strap. Sh sh straps, right? So a metal Bye. strap. Yeah. Yep. So that'll reinforce the integrity. Yeah, so probably they're three quarters of an inch, so probably one there and then one right there. Okay. Probably uh, put some epoxy right in here. So we'll have the two straps around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, put some epoxy in there. And then maybe just... Uh, Put some on the top as well. Okay. But should be okay. And we were talking about felt in between. Yeah. Doing something in between the sandwiching of the treads and the. Yeah, just a real thin layer, sixteenth of an inch or something, just to mm -hmm. prevent squeaking as well. Mm -hmm. Could be a good idea, but no, I think they came out pretty good. I think the jig worked out all right. Yeah. So. It didn't take too long to make that jig. <laughs> no. And then use it. It was uh, it was interesting. Definitely, <laughs> the, the chainsaw was getting dull, so oh, that was part of the yeah challenge. But but you so, got the job done. So there we go, folks. <laughs> yep, yep. You can do it yourself sometimes. I don't know. We'll see how it goes when we <laughs> put it all together. Just gotta think your way through it. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're. Preparing for a uh, return of winter this weekend. It's been really, really uh, nice with all this beautiful sunshine and melting all the snow, but we've got a big old spring snowstorm in the forecast, so we're going to get ready for that and update you on the next video. But just another day in paradise. <laughs> Hopefully it'll melt as quickly as it falls. <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, it's a cold snap. It's going down into single digits overnight, tomorrow night and Monday night, so... It's just going to be really, really cold for a few days, and then it's supposed to warm up by, again by next weekend. But yeah, I want to get this the this, this sanding done, so then tomorrow I can uh, stain them and yeah, and then maybe put some urethane on them. So so anyway, some indoor projects. Yeah, a little bit of indoor projects to work on. Always got those, but we'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. <laughs>